we have the hypothesis testing for two population mean dependent sample. For the dependent sample or the paired sample t-test, Dependent sample or the paired, the data is coming from the same group being measured twice. The number of samples should be the same. Example, before and after, pre-test and post-test. And we have here the diagram. Let's say, for example, we have sample A. We are going to get the score before or the score after after a treatment okay so sample before and then you made a remedial class then you will get the score after the remedial class for parametric test for dependent sample we have t-test for dependent means the function of this is the t-test for paired observation is used to compare two population means example is there significant difference between the mean performance of experimental group before and after remediation class? The assumption, the assumptions underlying the t-test for paired observations are the following. The samples are related. It should be related. And the population where samples are obtained must follow a normal distribution. Then the level of measurement used is at least an ordinal scale for the dependent. If we did not satisfy these following assumptions, we go to non-parametric test for dependent data. Wilcoxon signed rank test for the function. Wilcoxon match pair signed rank is applicable in testing the difference between two means or related sample. Example of this, a study assessed the effectiveness of a new drug designed to reduce the repetitiveness behavior in children affected with autism before and after one week of treatment. Assumptions The assumptions underlying the Wilcoxon match pair signed rank test are the value under consideration must be measured at least in an ordinal scale. Then the two samples are related. Okay, so we have here the summary for two population mean okay so let's have an example for the paired test having this as you notice i have put weight before and weight after from our original data so all you have to do is go to variable view put weight before then it's in scale then weight after and scale also then go back to data view. Then copy the data that I have given. This. Okay, so wait before, then wait after. So after that one, after copying that to our SPSS, we are now ready to analyze. So, so our next example is, is there a significant difference between the weight of the office workers before and after the intense exercise given to them? So we have the four process again here. We have to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. So for the null hypothesis, there is no significant difference between the weight of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. For the our alternative hypothesis, we negate the give, uh, given statement. So instead of saying there is no, we can say there is a significant difference between the weight of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. So choosing the statistical test, the t-test for dependent sample for parametric test. So we go back to our SPSS. One of the assumptions given for the given test for parametric is the normal distribution of the given data so let's see first click analyze descriptive statistics then we go to explore click explore then we'll be having this data so we put the weight before to our dependent list then weight after also to our dependent list 
the factor list will be the gender. Then after that one, we go to statistics, 95%, continue. Then plots, we should click histogram. And then after clicking histogram, we click normality plots with test. Then click continue. Then after that one, click OK. Then wait for interpretation. Okay, so we have here. Okay, so we have we go here all the way here. So we have the weight before for the male and female, then the weight after for the male and female also. So it shows that we have 10 each samples. Then statistics, then we have the statistics and significant figure for figure for Kolmogorov Smirnov. Then we have also the significance value for Shapiro Wilk. So in choosing between these two tests, accordingly, the Shapiro Wilk test is more reliable. So we are going to choose this one. So the significance difference is 0 0.051, 0 0.519, 0 0.135, and 0.1. 0.758 so if you notice they are all higher than 0 0.05 for the test of normality if the given significance is higher than 0 0.05 then we can we can conclude that the data is normally distributed and then we have here the histogram okay since we have proven that the given data is normally distributed, we can now continue with our test. Okay, so we go to analyze. Click compare means. Then we go all the way to paired sample t-test. Our variable 1 is the weight before. Our variable 2 is the weight after. Okay, then after that one, we go to option again to know that it should be in 95% or 0 0.05 critical value. Then we click OK. Okay, so we have here our table. The paired sample statistics, it shows that we have 20 samples for the weight before and then 20 samples also for the weight after. So... We have the standard error mean and then the standard deviation. For the paired sample correlation, we can see also that we have 20. Then the correlation is 0 0.936 and 0 0.000. But our main concern here is this one, the paired sample test. Okay, so we have the mean of 0 0.75800, the standard deviation, the standard error, then we have the lower and then the upper for the 95% confidence interval of the difference. In order for us to have our uh, conclusion and decision, we have to know this one. Okay, so we copy this. Okay, control C. Then we go to our... And there. Okay, so we have paste okay so in here it says there 0 0.000 for us to know the exact value we can double click so okay so it's really 0 0.000 okay so if we have that one we go back here 0 0.000 for our computation sorry this should be For the computation okay so if we have that point zero 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 how are we going to decide then okay so since the computed p value is zero point zero 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 which is lower than the critical value of 0 0.05 then we 
reject the null hypothesis. Since we have rejected the null hypothesis, we are going to accept now the conclusion for conclusion for the alternative hypothesis. So there is a significant difference between the weight of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. Notice that 0 0.000 is very, very low or very, very far from 0 0.05. And according to the given uh, significant difference that we have given before, this is considered as a 3 star. So there is a very highly significant difference between the weight of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. So that would be for this given test. Okay, so let's have here our next example. So we have here, is there a significant difference between the performance of the office workers before and after the intense exercise given to them? So our last time we discussed about the weight of the office workers, about that significant difference. But this time we are going to look at the significant difference between the performance of the office workers. So let's formulate our null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis will be there is no significant difference between the performance of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. And then if we negate that to get our alternative hypothesis, we can just say that there is a significant difference between the performance of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. So for us to know the statistical test that we are going to use, let's have first the test for normality for the given data. So we are going to get the test of normality of this. So the same process, we go to analyze, then we go to descriptive, then we go to explore. Then, okay, so we put the performance before, then our performance after there, and then the factor list is still the gender. Okay, so we go to plots, histogram should be checked, normality plots should be checked, then click continue, then after that one, we click OK. Okay, so we have here now our table. So we go all the way down for the test of normality. So the performance before for the male, 0.923. For the female, 0 0.002. Performance after, 0 0.022 and 0 0.001. So notice that we can say that the test of normality is being violated because... 0 0.05 is way higher than the given significant figure here. So we cannot use the t-test for dependent sample. So we go to its non-parametric measure, which is the Wil Wilcoxon rank test. Okay, so click, then click, no. Okay, so we go to analyze. Then we're gonna go all the way to non-parametric test. Since we tested that the data is not normally distributed, we cannot use the parametric test. So we go to non-parametric test. Then we go to legacy dialog. And then we go all the way down to two related samples. Okay. So I'll... Okay, so we are measuring for the variable 1 is the performance before. And then for the variable 2, the performance after. Okay, and then we click OK. Okay, so see, this is our Wilcoxon signed 
rank test. It shows the mean rank and then the sum of rank. But our main concern here is the test statistics. So, we copy this. Then we go back to our, this one. Okay. So, since it's non-parametric, we go for Wilcoxon signed rank test. Okay, and then we have here the significant figure 0 0.462. So, 0 0.462 is our computed value. So, let's have now our decision. Since the computed p-value is 0 0.462, which is higher than the critical value of 0 0.05, then if that is higher, what would be our answer? Then we accept the null hypothesis. Okay. Since we accepted the null hypothesis, our conclusion will be there is no significant difference between the performance of the office workers before and after the intense training given to them. So meaning... With or without the training given to them, their performance is still the same. So that would be for the Wilcoxon signed rank test.